Hello everyone. I've been getting a lot of questions about how to download my fan edit of Thomas and the Magic Railroad. I hope with this video to teach you exactly how to do just that. So first things first, as I say in the video, the link is in the description. And if you go to the Google Drive link for instance, it'll load so you're going to want to do is first and foremost obviously download this file and once it's done downloading the next thing you're going to want to do is if you don't have it already is install a program called 7-Zip. 7-Zip is a free and open source tool designed to compress and uncompress archives including its own format 7-Zip. Uh, I already have it installed so I'm not going to show that here. And so then you open the file and if it doesn't show up you can just go tell it to always open with that file and then here it is I'll go like this actually select everything right click copy no not rename right click copy to I will save it in a specific location So if you have a Mac, you need to want to go to this location in the Mac App Store. And I'll have links to all these programs in the description. And this is free. You just click Get, Install. Yep. Did my password. Okay. So now... Here is the folder. Now, apparently, on Big Sur, 7-Zip can automatically be extracted on Max natively, but obviously, that's not going to be the case for everyone. So, you can open it with the on archiver, which. Oh, sure. and bam, there it is, the same file. There are three files. The README, you can just ignore, just tells you basic information about fan edits. Uh, the NZB file, that is something that if you have access to something called Usenet, you can use that to download it. Uh, I don't know many people will have access to it, and more often than not, you're going to need to pay for access to it, so most people can also ignore this file. The big file right here is this one. It's the one that ends in .torrent. Now, in order to download this, you're going to need to some type of BitTorrent client. The one I recommend is QBitTorrent and, and what's nice is that it works on both Windows and Mac. And you go here, click download, save the file, and then once it's downloaded you want to click here, this might pop up, click yes. English. It's gonna load everything. Click 
Next, agree to the license agreement. Next. So this is where you're gonna wanna pick certain things. So first thing is if you wanna have a shortcut on your desktop, you can check that. I'm not gonna check that. Sub menu. Then if you wanna have this run on startup, you can select this which might be a good idea if you have the bandwidth and want to see the torrent but for now I'll leave that unchecked now these two you're going to definitely want to keep checked open that torrent files with qubit torrent and open magnet links with qubit torrent this will enable you to download this and other torrent files uh, in fact there's a certain uh, there's a certain bay of, of piracy that this fan in it, you can download it with two, and you need to have this check if you want to download it from there. And then this one, add Windows Firewall rule. You don't want to have that check, especially if I want like disable connections. And then this one, you might want to leave that check depending on how like, the file directories can be, but it's up to you. Obviously the defaults are pretty decent. Then you're going to want to choose an installment that's fine. And then on you want to click launch Qubit Torrent. Qubit Torrent works on Mac as well. And it's gonna work exactly the same way. Maybe not the install process, but once you have it installed to start the download, it's going to be exactly the same way. Okay, this is setting you know, because this can be used to download a lot more shadier things. And so I'll just click I agree. So all we have to do really is double click this. Tell it to open with Qubit Torrent. And this is. This is up to you as to where. I'm going to store this. So. Then. Once that's done, I'm just ready to load the torrent. Yeah, I can check, just click OK. And it begins downloading. If you've downloaded large files online, you may have encountered a protocol called BitTorrent. BitTorrent is an interesting approach to transport. It uses TCP internally. BitTorrent is trying to solve a little bit of a different problem. So let's talk about what the problem is and how BitTorrent approaches it. Let's say I have a large file, something like, for example, the image for a Linux distribution or something like that. And I want to be able to serve this file to a large number of clients all over the world. One way to do that is to put that large file on a server that's on the internet somewhere. So here's my huge file. This is a, you know, a ISO image for, let's say, Ubuntu. And then I have these clients download the file, right? So I have four clients that are trying to download the file, and I have them all downloading from this one central server. Here's the problem with this approach. This will create a bottleneck somewhere on the internet. So somewhere close to the server probably, it's possible that um, all the traffic generated by this download is going to eventually reach some point on the internet where it's going to hit a router and it may overload that router and so everything's gonna to start to slow down. BitTorrent is designed to allow groups of people to share a single large file more efficiently. So here's how it works. BitTorrent is a peer-to-peer -peer protocol so it doesn't rely on the existence of a server somewhere in the internet. Um, this is by design. This makes the protocol more robust. As long as there are, uh, is one computer out there that has 
an entire copy of this file, uh, it can see the rest of the network. So um, you may have, if you've used BitTorrent, you may have been asked to keep your computer on and seeding the file that you've downloaded, and this is so other people can start the download process. So in order for BitTorrent to work, somebody has to have, or the simplest example is that someone has a whole copy of the file. So let's imagine this computer up here in the corner has a whole copy of this uh, large, um, large image. And when three other clients start to download it, here's what we're going to do. We're going to break that file up into three pieces. So I'm going to break it up. One, two, three. Here's my big file. And this client is going to start to download three first. This client is going to start to download two first. And this client is going to start to download one first. Now, initially, the download proceeds as normal, and it's possible that this step creates the same bottleneck that we were talking about before. So this may occur a little bit slowly because uh, there's now a bottleneck close to this node, um, but we're only downloading a third of the file. So at some point, this guy has piece three, this guy has piece two, and this guy over here has piece one. So that's the first step. Now, you might think, well, what do I have to do in order for these guys to finish the file. Well, this guy needs piece two and three, this guy needs piece one and three, and this guy needs piece one and two. And so what BitTorrent does is it allows these three computers to cooperate to swap uh, the pieces that they need. So this guy is gonna send a copy of piece one here and here. This guy is gonna send a copy of piece two here and here. And this guy is gonna send a copy of piece three here and here. And this ends up looking fairly complicated. We've sort of created this fully connected graph of these nodes exchanging the parts of the file so that at the end of the day, they have all of the parts of the file that they need and re they can reconstruct the entire thing. And the reason that BitTorrent works is because of this fully connected graph. So by establishing so many different connections between nodes on the internet, we're making a better use of all the available bandwidth that's out there in the world. So the connection between these two computers um, is unlikely, it may, but it's unlikely to interfere, interfere as much with the connection between these two computers and so on. So by having the, all the computers exchange these parts of the file that they have, we can allow the file uh, download to complete much more quickly. Okay, so as you can see, the download has completed and now it's in a state called seeding. Uh, now, seeding, if you watched that video that I've shown, you understand that the BitTorrent sort of splits the upload and download parts across everyone who wants a copy of the file. Seeding occurs when you have everything downloaded and you just on to keep distributing the file. So, I'm going to minimize that for now, and now I'm going to show you exactly what was downloaded. So, we have a README, which sort of has a few notes based off of everything. You can read that if you want. This SFV file, you can just ignore that because that's something related to how you would download it from Usenet. It has virtually no use for you here. But do not delete this if you're going to seed because this needs to be in there for the seeding to work properly. And then this is an NFL file. It's another thing that has information which you can load in a web browser and you can view sort of explains everything. And that's the place and user that it's posted to if you wanted to get it that way without the NZB file. Well anyway, and then of course it's, what you really want is the movie and there's two versions of the movie. One is a DVD-R file which contains a video TS folder which you can use to burn to DVD and I'll show you a tutorial on how to do that in a minute. If you do put it to DVD, you're going to want some printouts that I've included. One is a
Uh, is there a cover explaining that you could print out if you wanted to make a case for it? Then there's also... Yes, you can just ignore this. But this right here, you can print out to make a label. Or if you... Or if you really want to use laser grip or something, you got the actual image here as well. Look at it. Yeah, probably just doesn't work. So I'm, I'm testing the parallels beta for the M1 Mac, which is what I'm actually running this on right now. But for now, so if the movies all you're interested in, I've also included an MP4 file which contains nothing but the full fan edit itself. I'll put this in his media player. So. This is really a movie. I'm going to show the opening logo. They're still in there. I just wanted to put my little branding of sorts in there because it's my fan edit. And obviously, we have. I know, I know. Boomer's <laughs> bad for this valley. And this is an HD, but obviously the latest scenes are not going to have that high quality. Because this valley is built on so, boomers back in town. So can, yeah. And he doesn't believe in magic. Thomas and the Magic Railroad will have an HD bit coming up pretty shortly. Well, hello, Mr. Conductor. Oh, hello, Billy. <laughs> so... That's how you get the fan edit. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to know when you, if you want to burn this to DVD is, is that I want to use a program called CD Burner XP. Uh, so, if you just click download the latest version and don't own any on the site, it's still going to download a version with something called Install Core. Now, Install Core is not necessarily malicious. It might throw a red flag if you have an antivirus installed, but basically, it's something that's going to try to get you to install toolbars or unnecessary add ons. Basically, Junkware that you don't want to put on your PC. So, if you're going to download CD Burner XP, always click More Download Options and then click De Default Installer without Install Core. Okay, click Yes. Exactly the license That's agreement. Next. Exactly Next. The You're not going to need all the languages, prop more likely than not. So, this is the file, should be enough. Next. Because that's what I'll use. Okay, then click install. So, on CD Bono XP. And when you launch it, you're going to want to select Video DVD and click OK. This dialog box will pop up. Now you're going to want to browse to wherever you downloaded. Okay. And then you're going to want to just select the DVD-R folder. 
Also die Tür ist vor jeden Fall. Then you can call it disk name, whatever you want. I'm gonna call it TATMR underscore fan underscore edit. Well, you know, I'll set you a DVD writer. I can take care of that if you want. I recommend it if you're a little cautious about making sure it burns the errors. I probably uncheck modify that. It should work fine, but if you have trouble, just burn it again and have that checked. Then you put the disc in and you click burn. I'm not going to do that right now. I already have a disc burned actually. Episode 0. Installing Burn. Step 1. Unpack the zip file by double clicking it. Step 2. Open the new folder. Step 3. Copy Burn to the Applications folder. You might need to be an administrator. Congratulations, Burn is installed. Episode 1 Burning a Video TS Folder. Step 1 Select the Video Tab. Step 2 Select DVD Video. Step 3 Name the disk. Step 4. Drag the video TS folder in the list. Step 5. Push burn to start burning. Have fun watching your movie. Okay, I've got my DVD player on. I'm going to put in the DVD to show you what it looks like. I think I have it turned down. I had a program on here before when I was recording. Let's see what the disclaimer is. What's neat is that 
the main feature. Here's Daddy and I will be Hi there. If you want it. Hi, Daddy. You can consult your manual if you really want that on. Um, it's going to vary from TV Our and equipment, so... Yes. And this bluebird is the bluebird. So, one last announcement I want to make is I know a lot of people have been wanting the fan edit uh, available elsewhere, especially considering there's technical difficulties. And if if you hadn't seen it, seen me say this yet, I recently uploaded my fan edit also onto Internet Archive. So go to archive.org, search for Magic Rare Lost Edition, and this will probably come up right away. Uh, and Obviously, I'm a little bit more nervous about this because of copyright concerns. That's why I didn't upload it to YouTube. But you can download the same MP4 file as before, or you can download an ISO image, which you can also use to burn to DVD. You can use Burn or CD1 XP to to burn that as well it's slightly different and a bit beyond the scope of this video there are other tutorials on YouTube explaining how to do this so and if you really 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 want to watch it in your browser you can also just start watching it in your browser I don't think you're going to be able to hear it, but trust me when I say you can watch it in the browser. I'll wait to see if it loads this jump. Oh, uh, I guess not right now, but basically that's how you download my fan edit. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. Uh, please l like and subscribe. Oh, there it is. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time right here on Record Entertainment.